Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for, for the invitation. Yeah. Um, okay, so what, what I'm going to talk uh, about today, it's not on a paper, it's, it's on, a, on a book. Uh, so this is the, the book. Um, it's uh, a graduate textbook, which has been accepted by uh, in, in the American Mathematical Society. And so it should appear, it, it's finished. I'm just re going through the reviews. Should be finished between in 2000. In, it is going to appear between 2022, 2023. Um, I have some references here. Um, if anybody is interested in in the slides, I'd be happy to send or to share the slides afterwards. And so these are like some references for uh, hard inequality. Um, in, in different types of domains, uh, but um, it, I'm gonna move on. And if you want, I can come back uh, later on. Okay, so let me start uh, the, the, the talk. And so now I'm going to write. Um, and so here uh, for us, um, Omega is going to be an open set. And uh, I'm gonna take P between one and less than infinity. And then I'm gonna take an integer K. So a natural number starts from one. And I'm gonna take uh, J from one to, uh, to one. Okay, so if I, um, I'm going to consider the uh, partial derivative. So if I take the derivative with respect to the variable xj in, in, a, in the standard solvable space. So in, if I take the solvable space wkp of omega, so a function u in lp and all the distributional derivative up to order k are in lp. And so if I take the function which sends u into the partial derivative, this function uh, maps the solar space is, is mapping into one less so in w k minus one p. Okay, and so and and this operator it's, it's linear and continuous. When um, in particular when, when k uh, if k is equal to one, then uh, w zero for me is going to be is just LP. Okay, so um, for standard solar spaces, when integer value where k is one, two, uh, the, the differentiation, the real partial derivatives are linear continuous operators. Now let's take um, k equals zero. So let me consider the case um, k equals zero. So now I'm take I'm considering the case in which the partial derivative. Uh, now goes from, it's just for LP. And so here for, for the moment, I'll put the question mark. And so again, I want to send you into its partial derivative. Uh, because you now it's not um, a server function, I, I need to consider uh, to do this in the sense of distribution. So, so here I have to do distributions. And so uh, what you do, you take, you define, um, you define the following distribution, you take T U apply to a function phi and is exactly what you expect is the integral over omega of U times phi in the X where phi is just any uh, infinity function with complex support. So it's in, this is just, C infinity function with compact support. Okay. Um, okay, so now if I, so now we are gonna identify you with the distribution T of U. <clears throat> and so now it makes sense to talk about uh, weak derivatives. And so um, the, uh, the derivative with respect to XJ of, of T of U, this is just defined as minus one 
the integral. You, you, you put the derivative on the test function. So partial derivative phi with respect to xj in the x. Okay. Um, and because u is, is in LP, so this guy belongs to LP, I can use holder inequality. And so if I do that, I have that the derivative of, of the distribution by holder inequality, it's bounded by the norm of u in LP times the norm of the derivative of u, or put the, the, deriv the partial derivative of phi in LP prime. And um, okay, so, and this is true for every phi, so all phi in, in C infinity with complex support. Okay, but so then uh, this is telling me that I can extend this operator to, um, so from here I get that the partial derivative of, of T of U can be uniquely extended to, uh, because of, of, of this inequality, I can extend this to uh, the function W1. Time. Yep, um, to W prime, W1 P prime zero of, of omega values in R, and this is gonna be linear and continuous. So this is telling me that the partial derivative of TU belongs to the dual of W1 P prime zero omega dual. And this usually, and by definition, this is W uh, minus one P of omega. And so we see again, so um, I'm gonna rewrite this. We are back to, uh, what did we prove? We proved that if I take, um, so what this implies is that the partial derivative maps LP into W minus one P, okay? And remember this was W zero P. And then you could do the same. Uh, and so again, this is what's important. This is linear and continuous. Okay, so we have now, okay, so let me, maybe I'll, I'll underline this because we're gonna need it later. So we have this. Uh, the partial derivatives maps LP into W minus one P in a continuous way. And, and we have that also say the partial derivative this is what I wrote down before, but I'm gonna rewrite it, maps W one P into, um, into LP, which is W zero P. Again, in a continuous way. Okay, so um, what I wanted to do here uh, when, I, when I was writing the, the book, I wanted to extend, like uh, we wanted to study what happens if now you move to fractional subway space. So I, want, I have these two, um, these two linear continuous maps and I want to do something similar for subways, for fractional subway spaces. So uh, let me take now uh, S between one and two. Uh, And let me consider the space WSP of omega. And uh, I'm just going to define it. So this is given by, so the definition, um, this, is, uh, this is the space, this, this space is the space of functions U um, in LP of omega, such that the semi-norm is, this following semi-norm is finite, so U, WSP of, of omega. It's the integral over omega, the integral of omega of u of x minus u of y power p norm to the x minus y and plus sp dx dy. It's finite. 
Okay, so this is the fractional sober space. Um, and so the, the, uh, the question is, okay, so this is WSP. Let me define also the WSP zero of omega. And so this is the same as what you do for the standard sober spaces. So you just take the infinity function with compact support. You take the closure with respect to the norm in WSP. The norm is just the semi-norm plus the LP norm. And uh, as you do for, for standard sober spaces, you define the dual. So if I take W uh, minus S, P of omega, this is just defined as the dual of W S P prime uh, zero uh, prime of omega. Okay, so the the question, so this is this is the fractional, this is the fractional setting. And so the question is like, okay, we have we've seen that the derivative sends W K P into W K minus one P. In a linear and continuous way, and are like, do we have the same property when you have fractional sober space? So the question is the following: question. Um, If I take the partial derivative, uh, with respect to xj, and I send, uh, I do WSP of omega. Does this maps into WS minus one P of omega? Um, so the question like in, in, and so we want this to be linear continuous. And um, just as a remark, because S is between one and two, this is S minus one is negative. So this is, the uh, dual of W one minus S P prime zero prime. Okay, so uh, the question is if you map WSP into the dual of W one minus S zero P prime uh, in a linear and a continuous way. And um, so this is a very natural question. And of course, this is very useful. I mean, when you want to study partial differential equations or, or, or the fractional equation. Uh, unfortunately, the, and so this is something uh, which is, uh, I think is due to Leon's and Magenis. The, the answer to this question, it's not, not, it's not always true. So, uh, so this is the question and the answer is no in general. And I'll, I'll show you in a sec. Answer no, and uh, the the crit there's a critical case for which things go wrong, and so this is the case S p equal one. So when S p is equal to one, this embedding this this uh, operator it's you don't have this. So I'm gonna actually prove it because it's 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 a nice proof. It's actually simple. And so let, I'll just do it in one dimension. So let's take, um, so, so I'm gonna do consider this case. So let's take dimension n equal one. Let's take omega to be zero one. And so, and, and so let's consider, and so the case SP, so I have S is gonna be one over P. Um, and so P, let's take, I want S between zero and one. So I'm gonna take P strictly begin, bigger than one. Okay, so now I take the derivative. Um, define, I want into the space WSP. So W one over P, P of zero one. Um, I'm going to, let's start with the very regular case. So I'm going to take the, uh, infinity function with compact support in zero one. And so this one maps uh, maps into W one, um, one over P minus one, P of, of zero one. And so uh, the result is that you cannot extend 
this. So, so this is the just standard you send u into the u prime. So this cannot be extended. Extended continuously to um, to w one over p. Okay, you cannot understand it. So how do we prove this? Uh, the proof is by contradiction. So proof. You, you go by contradiction. So by contradiction, you say, okay, let's assume that you can. Uh, so you can extend it. So, so if, uh, if you can extend it, then what does it mean? It means that the, uh, the distribution of derivatives, so the derivative of T of U with respect to X applied to, to phi, I can bound this, uh, it's, if it is continuous, I can, can be a standard continuous, I can bound this by the norm of U in the space W one over PP times the norm of, of the test function in, in the, um, in W, so this, the dual, so it's W one minus one over P, P prime. And this is true now for all, um, all U in W one over PP of, of zero one and all phi in, um, let's do, in same thing with complex support. Okay, um, now I'm gonna use an, an important property of, of um, fractional sober spaces. Um, well, first, okay, let me rewrite this. I'm gonna write this one. This is just the, uh, the integral from zero to one of u phi prime in the x. Okay, so this is... Uh, can I have one question? Yep. Yes, hi, Zobani. I just, uh, so for the k, uh, w one p, you define just for w one p zero, is it right? But here you can consider w one one over pp. You don't, you don't ask that. I didn't get it. So for that, you, you can see the, um, the x from, from, uh, from LP. Yep. Well, I mean, you, you assume something like u equal to zero on the boundary before? For you? Yes. No, for it's you, no. So u, u does not have to be zero on the boundary. Like here, never. So here, yeah. Yeah. yes. Okay. Okay, in okay, the, okay. In the dual, the, the, when you send it to the dual, then the dual, you put zero on the boundary. Okay, but, okay, okay. So, so the test function is zero on the boundary. Yeah, but the space, okay. no. Yeah, yes, actually, okay. so this, this is very, this is actually a good point because this is very important. This okay, is, okay, okay. Because okay, I, so I'm so. wondering, what, what, because here, well, here somehow, I mean, you mean the, the D zero one is not dense in W one over PP. Is that right? That the, the, the main point behind? Um, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll discuss this in a second. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. okay. Actually, okay. actually, it is uh, actually there. Okay. I'll, I'll come back to this in a second. Yeah. Okay. okay um, thank you. So, um, so okay. So we have we have this inequality. Um, now let's take um, take u to be c one in the cross set. Okay. C1 closed. And, and so if it is C1, I can integrate by parts, right? So, so by parts, and so when I integrate by parts, I get minus the integral from zero to one. Um, so this, uh, yeah, U prime times phi in the X. And so this it's bounded by a constant W one over PP and then times phi in W one minus one over P, P prime. And so this is, um, and this is again true for all phi, same infinity with complexity. 
Um, and now, okay, maybe I hope this is gonna answer the question. I'm gonna use an important fact of fractional solar spaces. Um, I, I'm, and, and it's the following. So if I take, say, if sigma is between zero and one and Q, it's uh, between zero and one and one and infinity and sigma Q is equal to one. So this is the key condition then you actually what you can prove is that w sigma q of, of omega is the same as w sigma q zero of omega so if telegorality is low enough th these two spaces are the same okay so having zero on the boundary or not having zero on the boundary is actually uh the same Nguyen, does this answer the question uh, yeah, yeah, it reviews some some facts. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay, thank uh, you. So then now, um, now let's take let's go back to this inequality. Um, so if I take so note so if I take sigma to be one minus one over p prime over p, this is just one over p prime, and if I take q to be one over p prime, then I'm exactly in this situation because I have sigma um, sigma q it's one over p prime times oh sorry q is p prime i have exactly one and so uh, actually in this case w one minus one p p prime is the same as w um, one minus one over p p prime zero and so then, uh, because of this property, if I have function here, this function has infinity with combata cos. So this function are zero on the boundary. But because I have this, this condition here, now I can extend this inequality if it's true uh, in, in if, if I have this inequality by continuity, I, can, I still have the same inequality in the space without zero boundary conditions. So I get, so uh, say, say from star and from two star, so star and two star imply that um, I have my, uh, that uh, I can drop the minus, the integral from zero to one, u prime phi, in the x is less or equal than a constant normal view in w one p p normal phi in w one minus one over p uh, p prime but now this is true for all and this is the important part for all phi which are not zero at the bottom so for all phi in w one minus one over p p prime of zero one and so now the trick uh, is that you can take phi equal one. Okay, so take phi equal one. And so uh, if I take phi equal one here, what am I gonna get on, on, on the left? I'm just getting fundamental calculus. I just get u of one minus u of zero, um, less or equal a constant times the norm of u in w1 over p, p. And, and the norm of five it's one so it's like okay, it. and so what do we prove we prove that we have this inequality and uh the only restriction i have is that u for all u in in w oh, sorry in, in c1 so this was c1 in the cross set zero one Okay, uh, but now uh, what's the trick? Okay, let's take C1, uh, for example, let's assume, so assume, let's take one of the, it doesn't matter, but let's assume say that U of zero is zero. Um, and now let's use the same fact as before. Uh, if I take S equal one over P, which in this situation, again, I'm in this situation where SP is equal to one. So I know that W one over P P it's the same as W one over P zero P. Um, okay. 
So then uh, what I know is that, again, uh, any function in W1P, one over PP can be approximated by smooth functions in the symphony with the complex support. So, so from here I can find, can find a sequence UN infinity with compact support in zero one, such that UN is converging to you in W one over PP. Okay, so then uh, these are smooth in smooth functions. So I can apply this inequality. So let's call this inequality star. So apply. Star to u minus u n, and so you get um, u uh, say u of one. Remember u of zero is zero, so I have u of one. This is the same as saying u of one minus u n of one. I apply uh, the inequality star, so this is by star. This is less than a constant the norm of u minus u n in w one over p p. So this is the norm here. Uh, and now you see this, I have strong convergence. So this is going to zero. So we, we prove, we prove that u of one has to be zero, which in general is not true because u was just any C one function in the closed set. So here you get the contract. Okay, so um, what did we prove? We proved that in the critical case, so just to sum up, so this is the end of the proof. So um, in the critical case, so if I take the, the partial derivative with respect to xj in uh, w one over p, p say of, of omega, this, uh, this, okay, I'm gonna put uh, that to say, this doesn't map and does not map into W uh, one over P minus one P of omega. In a the, the point is the continuous way. Okay. Any question? Other questions so far? We are okay. Yeah, we can continue. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, Okay, so, so this is where we are now. So what's the problem? So, so at this point, you, you, we find this. And so what is the problem? Um, okay, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about, I, mean, I would just mention um, abstract interpolation. So we have seen that the, the partial derivative uh, maps W1P, I'm gonna drop of, of omega into uh, LP of omega. And okay, I'm gonna write something funny. This is the same as the dual of LP prime. And it maps uh, it maps LP. into uh, W minus one P of omega. And this is the same as the dual of W one P prime zero prime. Now I'm gonna use abstract interpolation. So uh, if I use abstract interpolation, So this, these are linear and continuous. So um, if I use interpolation, so what, what do I get? I get that the, the derivative, uh, so uh, maps, so if I take the interpolation between LP and W1P, so this is the notation. So if I interpolate between LP and W1P, and I'm taking uh, SP, so this is the abstract interpolation. This is going to map uh, continuously into the um, 
interpolation between uh, LP and W minus one P uh, sigma SP. But uh, because these are dual spaces, like uh, interpolation works well with duality. So here, if I use duality, so, okay, let me, uh, yeah, so duality here. This is telling me that uh, this is the same as the dual of, if I do LP prime, so LP prime here, W one P prime zero. I interpolate as P prime and I take the dual. So this is this. And on, on the other side, um, you get WSP. So we know that the partial derivative maps WSP into the dual of this interpolation space. Um, so what the problem is, is that, uh, so now we, we, we go back to, so okay, let me underline this. So we need to understand this. So I'm interpolating between LP and I'm interpolating between W1P0. And so I interpolate and of course, when you interpolate between LP and W1P, you get the fraction of sober space. So the question here is, uh, everything would work well if when I interpolate, if here I would get um, W1, uh, sorry, WSP prime zero. And what we showed in a way is that this is not possible in the critical case. So this is not true. If SP is equal as okay as SP prime, like when when you are in the critical case, or let's say if SP prime is equal. Um, okay, so um, and so now we come to uh, the uh, result of Lyons and Magenis, and we come to the Lyons Magenis spaces. So Lyons Magenis. Um, I don't remember, I think it is 19, either I'm gonna say 68, but I think it's even before. Okay, let me put 68, but this could be wrong. Um, so what, what Leon's and Magenis prove is that if I interpolate, I'm gonna drop the P prime, I'll just go back to LP. If I interpolate between LP and, um, and W1P, W1P0, sorry. If I interpolate SP, I'm gonna get WSP0 uh, of omega. If SP is different from one, and so of, of course I'm gonna need omega nice. But in the critical case, I'm getting a new space. This is called the Leon's and Magenta space. So if I interpolate between LP and W1P zero of, of omega, when I have one over PP, so here I'm in the, in the critical case, I get the space, what I'm gonna denote it, W one over PP, I put two zero to say it's a different space. And um, what is this space? So let me define the, the, the space W one over PP zero zero. So, okay, I can define it for S between zero and one. So this, so I say function U belongs to W S P zero zero of omega. If when I consider the following function, so I stand U to be zero outside the bound, outside the omega. So if I define U of X to be uh, U bar of X to be zero. So U of X in omega and, and zero outside if X it's in Rn minus omega. So what I want is that if u bar, I want u bar to be in the same, in the sober space WSP over Rn. Okay, so this is the definition 
of uh, of the space of the Lyons. So this is the space the Lyons, and I'm going to so say this is the Lyons homogeneous. Any else much in the space. So um, u is in WSP 0, 0 if the extension to zero outside of omega is still in the fractional sober space WSP. Um, okay, so now we have a new space. So now we have three types of, of, of spaces. So we have, oops, I did something there. Um, we have, uh, let's see. Okay. Um, okay, so now I have we have WSP of omega, WSP zero of omega, and now we have the Lyons Magellan space, WSP zero zero of, of omega. So now, okay, so now the idea like what, what how are these three spaces related? So how what, what's the relation between these two? And so I'm gonna start um so give you the, the following theorem, which was proved by, again, uh, it's due to Lyons and Magenis. Magenis. So let me take omega is to a half space. So omega, it's Rn plus. So uh, the last component is positive. So it's the half space Rn minus one cross zero infinity. And so the theorem, so this is theorem A. And so this is due to Lyons and Magenis. Uh, says the following. So one, if I'm less than this critical dimension, so if SP is less than one, then all the three spaces are the same. So then WSP of Rn plus is the same as WSP zero of Rn plus. We already mentioned this, but this is also the same as WSP Zero, 0 of Rn plus. So in the case when sp is less than one, I have nothing new. So the Lyons Magellan space is it's back to it's just the standard fractional subspace. space. sp equal one, it's very different. So if sp is equal to one, then what you can prove is that the Lyons Magellan space. I'll keep sp. This space. It's contained in 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 WSP zero, but you have straight inclusion. So in general, they are not the same, and this and this is the same as WSP without zero on the boundary. So um, for the critical case, we have a straight inclusion. The Magellan space is strictly included in WSP zero. And then uh, in the super, well, in the case when I'm bigger than SP, as so as if SP is bigger than one, um, what you can prove is that the um, again the the Leon's Magellan space it coincides with WSP zero. So again, it does not give you a, a new space. It's one of the old spaces. And here you have strict link corrosion with WSP. Okay, so this is the theorem, um, the theorem of, of again, Leon's Magenis, and it's like, okay, so SP less than one, all these three spaces are the same. SP equal one, the Leon's Magenis space is strictly contained the other ones. And when SP is bigger than one, uh, the Leon's Magenis space is the same at WSP zero. Okay, so what was the problem? So what I was trying to do, so the, the, the main, Problem. I wanted to extend this theorem to um, Lipschitz domain. Okay, so as I said, this is done for the art space. Um, and so, uh, so the, 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 the question, the problem, uh, was um, can you stand Theorem, theorem A to and to actually I'm going to say unbounded 
लिफ्ट सिस्टम है ओके एंड आई एम नॉट गोइंग राइट इट डाउन आई आई आल्सो दिस इज वन आई डिड वांट टू यूज इंटरपोलेशन ओके सो यूजिंग आई जस्ट वांटेड टू डू अ प्रूफ which was only relying on the fractional symmetry okay because uh, uh the book i mentioned at the beginning of my talk this is based on 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 a book that i'm writing and the goal of the book is to um write the theory of fractional solver spaces only using the fractional symmetries not using very sophisticated tools like again interpolation theory or the little little wood play uh the composition so i want to just use in the the seminar uh okay so um i'm going to state the theorem uh, because i'm late um okay so the main theorem and so the answer is yes so theorem so the main theorem okay is that uh theorem a continues to hold to hold for um uniform elliptic domain these are okay I'm, i don't have time to write down the definition but this is the the standard definition of stein uh especially you are controlling the lipschitz constant on on of the domain so for uniform elliptic domain Okay, and as I said, the proof is using just fractional semi-norms. It's not using anything uh, fancy. So maybe let me explain. So why? And I didn't talk about hard inequality. Yet. Let me explain why um, I couldn't find this result in in the literature. Um, so let's take let's consider a function u in WSP. of of our n plus and let's extend it to zero and so let's see when when is so extend it as i extend it to zero and so u bar is the extension to the extension by zero in in our n minus uh minus the half space and so let's see what the fractional sober norm is So if I do the integral rn of u bar u bar of x minus u bar of y times the norm of x minus y and plus sp dx dy and so what do I have uh, in the half space so if both x and y are in the half space I'm just getting the fractional symmetry so this one I'm going to get I'm not going to rewrite it so this is the semi norm of u in in the half space then if both of them are in uh, the region where i'm zero if both x and y are zero then i have a zero and so then if i use uh, fubini uh, i have the set the set where u it's in rn plus so here i have u of x and then uh, u of y it's in the complement so in rn minus rn plus and so 1 over the norm of x minus y to the n plus sp in dy and then in dx okay so this uh this is the the norm the fractional semi norm of of u bar so in order for this to be finite i need this is finite if and only if this object is finite and process p dy dx and then now you do uh, a little bit of of um computations and so what you find is that this is equivalent to the integral rn plus u of x raised to the power p 
divide so this 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 entire integral this is the same as the last component one over xn to the power of p and so for u to belong to for u bar to belong to wsp we we need this quantity to be finite and now this is where you see this is hard like this is where you see hard in Because if we are in, in um, the, the fractional sober space, so what we know is that um, u of x power p divided by the norm of xn as p in dx, this is less or equal than a constant uh, times, let me write the semi norm, the semi norm of u power p wsp of rn plus. Uh, this is true for all u in, in WSP uh, zero of Rn plus. And you need, again, you have to stay away from the critical case SP equal to one. Okay, so this is a, explains like to be in the Magellan space, you need this quantity to be finite. And when you are away from SP equal to one, this quantity is finite exactly because hard inequality works in the fractional solar space. Um, okay, so I have just a few minutes. What's the problem now? So this is for the hard space. Um, unfortunately, so there's a problem with hard inequality. If we, instead of having the hard space, you go to a bounded domain. So if I take now omega into Rn, in Rn bounded, bounded and Lipschitz. Um, there's a paper of, of Daida. Uh, I think it was from uh, 2000 and yeah, so 2004. So very recent, well, mathematically very recent. Uh, what it proves is that if I take hard inequality, the equivalent, so the integral omega u of x to the power p, and then here this xn in the r space is just the distance from the boundary, so the distance from x to uh, the boundary, uh, so this is the power of p in the x, so this inequality. Um, let me put a big error, so to say this is false, fails. Uh, uh, if if FP, SP is less or equal to one. So this for U in WSP zero. So you don't have, um, so, RD, so it's true for SP bigger than one. So for hard, hard inequality, in this case fails for, if I take a nice bounded domain, I don't have hard inequality, okay? And so, and as I said, I needed this, hard, this you need this inequality to prove that, that the Lyons Magellan space is equal to the uh, standard WSP zero. Um, okay, so just I have one minute, so I'll, I'll just mention um, the fact that this inequality fails does not mean that the left hand side is infinite. And so the, the theorem, so uh, if you want the, the second theorem, and then, then I'll stop. So theorem um, again take omega uniformly Lipschitz. Um, and then, uh, so what you can prove is that that let's say the right, the left hand side is that u of x to the power p divided by the distance from the boundary. S p. Uh, I will be writing. Uh, SP, yeah, s p. Um, this is less or equal a constant, and so the main difference. So. If you want the semi-norm, the theorem is false. 
And so like this is, uh, if you put the full norm, this does it. If you put the full norm, you're okay. So this is for all you in WSP zero of omega. And again, this is for SP different. And so it's, you're still okay because this it's what you need. So this for this implies that, so as a corollary of this, you get that WSP uh, zero of omega, WSP zero zero is equal to WSP zero of, of omega, okay? So you, need, you just need this, the left-hand side to be, uh, to be finite. So this is finite because you can bound it by the full norm. And uh, the proof, okay, I'm out of time, but so the proof was done um, just using, first you do the one dimensional that case, and then you do a slicing argument. And, and so that's how I did the proof. Okay, so I think that's um, 851. Um, so 